Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wine with Jimmy and welcome to another really exciting interview, a part of our PV series here. And we have Adam Pavlovsky. How are we doing, sir? Perfect pronunciation. I'm great. Thank you. It's great to have you on board. So you're a master sommelier. You have your Adam Pavlovsky Wine Academy in Poland. And you've also, uh, which is mainly around teaching, of course, delivering excellent education. And then you work, I believe, with your um, your other half, maybe your better half. That's what I call my other half. That's for sure. Uh, but in terms of uh, hospitality, you, you've you um, published a lot of books to help people with uh, with hospitality, which is fantastic. But you do some consulting. And I know you've been working in the vineyards as well around um, PV varietals because I got a wonderful video from you recently, yeah. which was quite, uh, quite exciting. So. Please, of course, add some more as an introduction. I, I'm not sure if that was everything, but um, please, the floor is yours. Adam, tell me about yourself. Yeah, I mean, that you've told, you know, you've said plenty already. Uh, so first of all, thank you so much uh, for having yeah. me. Uh, I mean, um, um, my background is uh, in terms of wine, it's uh, uh, UK. Yeah. So, so that was probably first my first uh, uh, interaction with PV was uh, in the UK. Uh, yeah. But I kind of knew that um, that uh, exciting things are going on back home. Uh, so as soon as I moved back home about ten years ago, I started to be exposed more uh, to wines made from uh, PV varieties. And I mean, uh, some say hybrids, some say uh pv but what i really like to call them uh resistant varieties which uh, which is which is a bit nicer than just saying hybrid hybrid you know it gives you that kind of uh um not very not very pleasant and 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 and, and positive i think uh, feeling about this name so and also variety, in right? the english speaking market right peewee doesn't sound too positive as well yeah. yeah, two two different variations on uh, on something which is not the most pleasant of things, but but that's why we, I think we have to say the V, right? PV, very <laughs> importantly. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And I mean, uh, ten years ago, really ten years ago, fly back home, go back home, and start start you know on on my turf, uh, on my Polish ground, uh, start to do a little bit of business, a little bit of work, a little bit of education, a little bit of consultancy. But that was ten years ago, a uh, long time for. Polish wines, um, and when you look at uh, what is planted now, but was planted ten years ago, it's pretty much I would say the same, uh, but in a larger scale, a little bit yeah. larger scale. So um, I get to Poland, and I suddenly I'm, I'm exposed to Polish wine. I started to uh, taste them, drink them, judge competitions, and to be absolutely honest with you. Um, out of 10 wines, maybe two I would drink and maybe one I would recommend. And the other eight was uh, early days or mm -hmm. mistakes or mm -hmm. learning curves or <laughs> how, <laughs> however you want to call it. Um, and years go by, year after year after year, and every year another competition. You taste another vintage and suddenly four wines oh. are drinkable out mm -hmm. of 10 and then five wines and then we get to now then we get to now when polish wine made from pv varieties resistant varieties uh, are becoming uh, i would love i would love uh, it to be true i just I, I feel that it's happening that it's becoming kind of comfort zone and when you grab a bottle, you know that's going, you're going to have a pretty nice evening or afternoon with it. Uh, or morning. Like, yeah, or morning. <laughs> Five, ten years ago, impossible. Only maybe a short group of producers uh, that kind of have found and they, 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 they have resources to kind of deliver. To deliver mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. when you know you look outside you look outside and you check that the the wet the the the, mm, uh, the um, climate patterns because weather there's no pattern to it it's just crazy but in terms of climate patterns they are changing hugely 
And if you if you talk to producers 10, 15 years ago, the biggest problem for us was the winter frost. That was the biggest issue. The temperatures minus 25. Uh, mm. that, that was that was the biggest issue. And then and then you get to uh, late April, early May, and there's spring frost. That's another yeah. issue. And then you have this beautiful summer. I never go on holiday during summer in Poland because the the weather it's amazing. It's great. So, but it's relatively short. Mm. So you want some varieties that can handle the winter frost then or freeze if you like then they bud late so it's in may not in april and then you want your varieties to be ready to be picked relatively quickly so uh, by definition if you look at this type of climate you really go PV, you really go resistant. Uh, and still around 70%, it would be, it, it is now uh, PV resistant varieties and 30% um, cool climate Vitis vinifera. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is what's happening in Poland. And uh, it, just, just bear in mind that 85% of Polish wine consumers don't spend more than 35 zloty, which is around seven pounds for mm -hmm. a bottle of wine. So any Polish wine, it's within premium and super premium category straight away. Mm. So, uh, I mean, a little bit like with, with English wine, yeah. of course the quality yeah. it's, you know, going up, 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 but the prices as well. Um, so when you come, when you have this Polish reasoning or Chardonnay or Pinot Noir, which they could be really, really good, but if you compare them with German reasoning, with Austrian reasoning, compare them with uh, um, Burgundy in terms of Chardonnay, they yeah. they cannot be compared easily. Yeah. You know, they they cannot be compared, and especially when it comes to um, price value category. So there is PV there is resistant varieties which are lesser known, but they kind of been around and we kind of think of them as maybe not like a commodity or, or but, 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 uh, but it's not, it's nothing new. It's nothing new and this market is shaping. So it's really more brand driven than knowledge driven mm. than varieties driven uh, of course we all know Riesling like Polish market is big for Riesling we are I think like number six or seven for for German wines yeah? so we know Riesling and we kind of understand it um, so Riesling it's a good idea but then if you if you look at um, how much yield you're going to get from your Vitis vinifera varieties versus your PV and how much more you have to spray and you and your your yield and the amount of time and the nerves and stress and and <laughs> at the end is going to be uh, to be big effort to make average wine and which is going to be very expensive mm -hmm. so you have that PV route uh, PV is paying bills mm -hmm. because the yield is much bigger. Uh, and if you have a um, kind of modern PV variety, then you have now even around uh, four genotypes R, which, which are very resistant. Some of them don't really require any spraying. So, or very little. Mm. On average, if you compare to Vitis vinifera at the moment, so it's uh, half half the amount of spraying that you have to do in the vineyard, which is much less effort and much less cost, and the yield uh, can be you know double easily 